Welcome back. Today in our video we're going to talk about movement inside of your games. Now movement can be classified in two different sections. We have the physics based movements and also the pixels per frame movement where you're moving an object without the need of physics or physically accurate movement. These are very important to understand separately but also there is a bigger and broader definition that you need to understand and that is when you press shift A and bring up the node selection panel in arm 3 d we have the possibility to navigate to the transform section and in here we can find most of the movement related things that aren't physically based. So what we have here is something very important to understand, the difference between location and transform. Transform encompasses all the different values of an object's properties, for example its scale, rotation and location. Whereas if you want to modify only the location, you wouldn't necessarily want to use a transform node, you'll want to use a location node because that is specific to the location. But if you want to affect multiple values of that object, for example modifying its location and rotation at the same time, then you'd probably want to go towards the transform node. So this is a very important difference to understand. The most basic and general purpose node for this is the translate object node. Now this node is widely used to just modify the position of an object continuously. So you have a couple of things that you need to fill in in this node to make it work and that is obviously firstly an event, something that triggers the movement. For example a key press. If we use the key down W maybe and we want to move our object forwards then you can see with this little gizmo in Blender that shows you the axis orientation we can actually go ahead and increment our object to move along that specific axis. For example on the Y axis in the positives if you want to do it backwards you'll do a negative value. So you can see down here we have the vector socket you can tell because because it's purple and these vectors correspond to the x, y and z as order of uh, positionment. So what we want to do is increment the second, the x socket, in a positive value so moving forwards. However this is only limited to the world axis, there is a difference between the world axis and the local axis because the world never changes but an object can move on itself, meaning its own local axis has been modified. So if you want to move the object on its local axis then you can activate this boolean checkbox down here that says on local axis. However if you search up the on local axis node you can see we have the translate on local axis node which is a slightly different node but it's the same purpose except this one isn't an optional local axis whereas the other one it allows you to use both global and local this one is purely local and the reason it looks different is because it's a different method of working you see this one uses speed instead of the different values that you would increment on the specific axis that you're targeting or multiple axes if you want for example this one you can augment the speed and instead of uh, having an axis we have here an integer which 0 corresponds to forwards, 1 is up and 2 is right and if you wanted to do the opposite for example maybe go backwards instead of forwards you can just invert it. And the reason this node is slightly different is the fact that now if we use a more programmatical method for example having an S plug in the state and that is going to invert it we can basically control uh, how and uh, what our nodes are really doing uh, without needing to hard code the values at the beginning which is what you usually do for the basic translate object node. But this one also is just a different method, they have the same mechanic but it's just depending on your different projects it's good to be aware that these nodes exist and there are different methods that you can use instead of using the translate object node with different variables you can instead use a method like this if you really want to control the details of how your movement system is operating. Although we do have a bunch of other ways of moving things in Dynamo 3D, for example the set transform node. You see this is like a teleportation node, it instantly sets the object to whatever location you've uh, designated, like here it's at the center of the game but we can also get the location of uh, an existing object in the scene and use that to be uh, for example a spawn point. So you can have a, like a random spawn point for example but more importantly we can actually control what we're doing in between here because if we're getting the object's location and then we're updating that to be the object's location we can also do a bunch of math, uh, we can do whatever we want in between so we can use for example a vector map node in between here and that way we can control the offset that the object is going to have between the uh, current uh, position of the object, add a bit of offset for example 0.630 on the y axis and then add that to be the new position of the object. That is essentially what the translate node is doing all in the single node but this is obviously the different components in uh, the separate system. So 
But by fleshing out here, we can also control a bunch of different things like the mathematical operations that's taking place. For example, multiplying by a certain thing on a certain axis or a bunch of other crazy stuff that you have access to now. But obviously the set object location can also work with the tween node, for example, the tween vector node. But I've made a whole video talking about twin vectors where you talked about movement in that one, so I'm not going to go over it again. However, although there are a bunch of different ways of making movement inside of Vang 3D, I haven't even covered all the physics-based methods yet, but there is another thing I want to talk to you about, and that is a bundled script. Now, we can select the object, add a army trait, set it to bundled, select it, and now we can select from a bunch of pre-packed scripts inside of Armory 3D that come with the SDK automatically, and here we have a simple move object script. We can apply that, and here we have a little public float that allows us to control the speed, and now when we go ahead and play our game we're basically going to have this basic movement setup with WASD controls without you needing to touch any logic nodes whatsoever. Now obviously if you're not familiar with hacks then editing the scripts and opening it up is a great way to actually learn hacks from these bundled uh, hacks code inside of Arm3D. But basically these bundle scripts are a, a great way of getting started in Arm3D even if it's just like a placeholder script that you're using as a pro tem to test your game uh, and then you'll probably use like your custom movement system with logic nodes later on down the production pipeline. It's something very interesting to be aware of. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for next video as we talk about the part two of all the physics-based movements that we haven't talked about here. See you there.